On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. I will always be the first person to say that I am by far never the most smartest person in the room. (laughs) But the first story we're going to talk about today, this dude, if I was in the same room, I would feel confident that I was the smartest person in the room. But before we get to it, we have Layla back again. We're so excited to have you back. I'm glad you you stuck around. I'm having fun. This is a cool, cool podcast. Thank you for having me. Zach and Matt, as always. Hey, hey. (laughs) Hello. You know, and and, uh, um, you got anything interesting coming up, Layla? Like you go anywhere cool, you do anything? But no, oh, Layla always gets no, 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 no. Here's something. Let me yeah. tell you, I'm jealous of her. Uh-oh. In these, she gets to do the cool stuff. Like she gets to go out to Hollywood for all the big film stuff and yeah. interview. What's the last couple of movies you, you've been at? And who are the people you've interviewed? I just wrapped up Ant Man and the Wasp. It's a Marvel film. Really cool because it's the first time a female character has had her name in the in the title of a Marvel movie. Oh wow. Um, so I talked with my Michael Douglas yep. recently. That was the highlight. Oh gosh! Yeah, uh, yeah I and also did uh, the the sequel to uh, Jurassic, Jurassic World. So this was Fallen Kingdom. So Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard. Um, what about the funny one with all Jeff the older Goldblum. like ladies that were like icons? Uh, what was that oh, movie? Oh, I did the Book Club. Yeah, I Who? sat down with Jane Fonda. Oh wow! Candace Bergen. Yeah, all the all the great. Is that ladies. not cool? That's Mary pretty cool. That? Yeah, it's cool. In, in the moment when I'm there, because I've met some amazing people. Holly Berry is so beautiful in person. It's so sweet. When I meet these people, it's it's um it hits me after. Yeah. Because what people don't know at home, when I have these interviews in, in Hollywood, I get four minutes. That's it. And sometimes that's really like three thirty. It's yeah. not even four. I have four minutes to find stories and magic and several stories and and so I have to go on there like with tunnel vision. Then afterward, I'm like, oh my god. I really just hung out with, you know, <laughs> Thor. Yeah, like, how cool is that, <laughs> right? You know, I was just like staring at Chris Hemsworth for like four minutes. It was great. Yeah, I'm, Layla, I, you do, know. I, do a, I do a movie podcast on the side. Let's oh. talk offline after oh, the show, yeah, shall we? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I have some exciting Cut stuff coming out, Hollywood but I can't show. announce it just yet. I have some big, yeah. some big yeah. movies coming I thought, up. I was always jealous when I've seen it because obviously whenever you and Jenny started working together, I started following you on Facebook and Instagram, the Instagram and all that stuff too. And I was thinking, man, that's cool. Like, that would be fun to be. Um, it's a grind because it happens quickly. It's a lot of flying and, and you know moving and shaking, but I make it happen. And I made that relationship work with the studio. Yeah. So now they they call me and say, "Hey, you want to come do this?" And it's rad. a win win for the job because you put the stuff on air, and there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, maybe you could go to Florida and interview this next guy. <sighs> oh, if you maybe want to just really get into inside of a genius brain here. But I think my question is just, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Zach, got to tell him. <laughs> well, first things first, uh, I want to give a shout out to where this come from. Gets comes from. The uh-huh. author of this article is an old friend of the show, an old so-and-so, yeah. Chad Prather, believe yeah, it or yeah. not, over on politicalcowboy.com, so check him out. <laughs> Florida man asks police to test the quality of his meth. You can guess what happened next. Yes, Douglas Kelly, a 49-year-old man from Florida, called the police and told them he'd had a bad reaction to some meth he wow. purchased and <laughs> consumed from a dealer. He asked the county sheriff's office if they would test the drugs for him, make sure he hadn't been sold some other narcotic, uh, (laughs) stating he would press charges on the dealer Uh if that were the case. Uh, Going to get to the bottom of it. According to the sheriff's office, uh, they said they... They, they said, sure, come on over. So he drove over, handed the detectives a clear crystal-like substance wrapped in aluminum foil. They arrested him on possession of meth. He was held on $5,000 bond. And they got on Facebook and let people know, public notice, if you believe you were sold bad drugs, we are offering a free service to test them <laughs> for you. Oh, dumb oh, criminals. Oh, gosh. Mm. Yes. I mean... Can you imagine the cops when they got the phone call with it that how much they did not expect anybody to walk in there with meth? Like they thought maybe their buddy was pulling the prank on them because, I mean, 
I mean, they had to, but they had a pool going. Like, who thinks he actually comes in, right? <laughs> yeah. No way that was real. That was a gag. Oh, he seriously brought his meth mm-hmm. to get tested by the cops because he was going to press charges on against his the dealer. dealer. On his meth dealer. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. And they tested it proudly. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. To be to be fair, they did actually field test it, and it did test positive. Yeah, they so they, they did it. actually <laughs> run it for him. Yeah, that wasn't a bit like that happened. You know, I just thought that was hilarious because I thought that anybody can laugh at that because mm-hmm. that he's really that dumb, and and it, that was mind blowing to me, um, and it made me feel better because I know I'd be smarter in the room with him. You know, yeah, for sure. Sure. <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty sure I got that one beat. Um, but what, you know what I thought about too, because I've, I've talked about it before, and especially as a younger. Um, person but in or or even a newer person in a new area you know mm-hmm. we always say you know there's no such thing as dumb questions and, and things of that mm-hmm. to ask them and that's true that they, you need to ask to learn and all right. of that luckily in today's world we got a thing called google we can always ask too mm-hmm. you know <laughs> or siri <laughs> yeah sure she knows a lot and i guarantee <laughs> you and i guarantee you layla that whenever i kind of tell you on this that you're gonna go you're gonna resonate with it because being 24 25 giving the news and being around a lot of you know look there's just so much things that a 60 year old person has a lot more wisdom than us at right. 24 25 and because mm-hmm. i've been in the same deal i've been in those circles where i was like in a meeting about insurance right and with all these brokers been around forever and they they have brought up something like uh one you know, miwa right they're talking about it all and mm-hmm. it's going and i don't have a clue what that is right, okay right and but i didn't i i but i knew <laughs> that it was something I probably should have known. <laughs> right. Okay, so you've been in. Have you you've been in these mm-hmm. conversations where that person that is in that meeting where they should, and then go, well, what's a me? When everybody's like, how the hell do you not know that, right? Mm-hmm. Me, I'm the one that I deflect the questions, ask them questions back. I just keep in, I don't I don't put opinions on it because I don't know it. You know, I'm just not going to bust out in the middle of them, dude. As soon as I leave, I go to Google and try to find and I it. learn it uh-huh. for the next time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so. I can guarantee you that you've been in conversations where someone that did, and, and you are the type of person that probably used your intuition to know, maybe I should not, I, I should probably know this, so mm-hmm. people come around, and instead of, you know, I, I never acted like I knew what I was talking about on it. I just would like, if somebody said, well, what do you, what's your thought on the me? Well, I would have said, you know, well, what have you used in the past with it? <laughs> right. You, you know what I mean? Sure. Let you answer that yeah, question. I because, don't know what's going on. Because yet. I realized <laughs> right. I, I probably should know this, uh-huh. and I went back and I learned it. Mm-hmm. There's two types of people. The people who just are, they just don't care enough that they just are like, well, what's me with? Even though realizing, I should probably know what that is. Mm-hmm. And the other one that walks away and they never think about it again because they never learned. Where I always went back and learned. Mm-hmm. And I was like, next time I'm not going to know that. Have you ever been in those situations? Oh, yeah. And I, been with those people that, were, you know, have, you know, said something and it's like, especially being on air probably on something going like, you really should have known that. You shouldn't have asked that on air. Right. But but I've also been the one who had to learn things, especially earlier on. And you're in a meeting and it, it just even starting out on TV, certain terminology we use. I may have to go back later and like, let me go what yes. that meant. Or pull someone aside. Okay, I know what that means. How do I make that work effectively? Can you show me? Just finding someone who can teach you on the side. That's putting that initiative out there. To yeah. say, I'm going to learn on my own versus coming to the meeting next week and still not knowing what this terminology means or yes. how to best uh, put this story together. But you went back and worked it. to yeah, know it. Yeah, yeah. Or how to properly do an investigative piece, which is much more in depth and much longer than, than a traditional story. Um, it, but on air, it can happen on air because you don't. I try to say I go into every day trying to know everything about everything <laughs> because you just never know what we're going to cross talk about. Yep. So if I look at the whole show rundown and I know all the stories in there, let me know a little bit about everything so I can kind of at least sometimes BS my way through a conversation. Yep. There are some topics you can't BS. Mm-hmm. Right. Politics is one. Yep. Ooh. And I tell folks, if you don't know what's going on in the political climate, don't try to BS on TV. Our show airs in D.C. They know their stuff. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You cannot yeah. fake fake it for those audiences so i try to know a little bit about everything but there's also that trust you can have with the co-host or co-anchor where i can give you a look that says that no, you got you this. got this i, I got i'm nothing. like mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know what this story is about and I've, I've built that trust with co-anchors over the years where we can look at each other yep. and know he has me or she has me and i know you don't know this topic yep. i got you so but that's you know important. but here's the thing too though don't i mean you i don't know if you should ever bs anything ever i just don't think you don't have to blatantly ask, uh, you know, if somebody says something about uh, football and, and, you know, the people who be are the ones that will try to act like they know on the topic and then yeah. they BS it. See, like me, I, I didn't BS it. I, I would just not. 
I would never engage like I knew it. Right. But I wouldn't be going. I don't know what the heck y'all are talking about. Right. You know, I would, yeah. but I just wouldn't be like. I wouldn't be trying to give my opinion. You, I've been yeah. one of those people that want to give their opinion and they have no, no clue idea what they're talking on. about. Right. And that's yeah. their BS trying to BS their way where I would just always ask questions back. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. That way I didn't have to give mine. And I think that people don't take the time. Um, I, I, I've never understood why. I've never been in a conversation where if there's something I don't know what's going on that I hadn't went back to learn. Like that's that's I've always taken those as opportunities. I'm going to learn about that because... Next time, I'm going to be able to talk, you know, intelligently about, about that. it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I, you're I'm going to drop a hot football analogy here because yeah. I'm oh, so oh, up on, on football. He knows nothing about <laughs> sports. Nothing oh. about sports, Layla. It's sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're, you're not running the ball. You're just playing defense. Yeah. All right. The other team's got a strategy that you don't know. You're just, you know what? I'm going to step back for a minute. Yes. I'm going to figure out what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to move forward. Yeah. Yes. Like, and there's nothing wrong with that, I think. Uh, you just got to know when to switch. And, and I got, and it's got to be careful because what I'm trying to explain this because I don't want this to come off wrong. I, you know, it's, it's not okay that to I ask questions. Yes, yes, but it's also know the times that if maybe you are in a lane, right, that you're supposed to, let's say you're supposed to know this about politics and you're on air, okay? Yeah. Um, and it comes, something comes up and, and they talk about it. And if you don't know it, don't start freely giving your opinion on something you don't know. It's best to play the defense on, find ways to deflect that, uh-huh. be, you know, Pay atten- be intuitive enough to realize when you're in a situation that there's something that everybody's commonly kind of talking about and you don't know that maybe it is something you should, mm-hmm. that maybe you just keep deflecting and you learn afterwards in that maybe it's not the time to go. Hey, me- cops, can y'all come test this meth and tell me I think I got it wrong. <laughs> You know, maybe there's time to go. Maybe I need to sit back and Google it. <laughs> I think in his, and I can't give him a defense because I just can't defend this guy. Yeah. <laughs> in his defense, bless his heart. Yeah. He was clearly on, th- yes, on the drugs. Yes, he was on the drugs. And uh, yeah, that might have been a first for that department. And I'm sure I think that's the first going down in history. <laughs> yeah. well, what, did yeah. he drive there? Like, what was his that, plan oh, exactly? Qu- did he Uber or did yeah. he drive? That's a good question. <laughs> he better have Ubered. And yeah. if you can order an Uber and call the cops and deal with all this, odds are the meth is probably okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's clearly clearly you were able to function. Yeah. You're, you're probably all right, but that's it, whatever. Yeah, I, have question. I still have questions. I think that what I, what, <laughs> what I want to make sure everybody knows, it's okay to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you, you need to be intuitive enough to realize when it's something that you should probably blatantly know that it's best to hold off, play defense in that conversation, and mm-hmm. go learn it afterwards. That's not BSing. That, yeah. is, that, is, that is being intuitive enough to know it and go learn it. Mm-hmm. Don't leave and not learn it. These are the times when the things come up you don't know about. Don't speak and give opinions on what you don't know. Yeah. Um, but go back and learn it. These are like that's, I've learned everything I've learned over after I hear something I don't know. I play defense, and I go back, and I learn it, and I Mm -hmm. go, that's not happening again. Mm -hmm. Don't be the person that calls the cops to test your meth. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) Great way to tie Uh, that in. We'll be right back in a minute for the second segment of Second Shot. (laughs) He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. Keith Oaks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal and go do it right now. Energyogre.com, promo code second shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. On the last topic, we were just saying like, wouldn't you hate to be the public defender that's got to defend that last guy? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that would <sighs> stink. Like, that's like, you want to talk about be putting a no in a no win situation? Mm-hmm. That's got to be a guilty plea, right? You're like, as 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 a lawyer, that's my advice. Plead um, guilty. Just roll over. It. Yeah, like you're not you're not getting out of it. What are I, you gonna do? You go to court and the, and the prosecutor says, "Your Honor, let's play this tape." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> That's it. You <laughs> showed up at a. Yeah, okay, I mean, a there's the tape. I guess yeah. you could. I guess you could play the mental route because he obviously would have to be mental. I mean, you you got to think he's not in his right mind, right? I mean, you could almost play that probably because who would do that? Yeah, under the he was heavily under the influence, and you know he gave up names when he got there. This is my supplier. Can you call him and ask if this <laughs> he is was, real? He was trying to call yeah. the cops on a bad guy. Are yeah. you calling the good guys about the bad he guys? He was doing deal. the right thing, uh, just in the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. Oh god. You know, now this next one, I bet you a hundred dollars that this next one is is like i bet you if you had a room of 20 30 people that it is going to be kind of a both side there's going to be there's going to be a lot of people that that can argue on both sides Mm. of this next one i bet and there's a new app that locks teens phones until they reply to parents texts nick herbert a father in the united kingdom got his son ben an iphone when he entered middle school to keep up with them as you do and he ran into the same problem that a lot of parents do it's difficult to you know, keep up with them. Uh, his phone would be on silent because he's playing games or he's been at school uh, or he's ignoring you. And <laughs> he, uh, he he wanted to figure out a way to get a hold of his son uh, whenever he needed to. So he developed an app. Uh, he kind of took his, you know, blazed his own trail and developed an app called Reply ASAP, which is exactly that. It's an app that locks your phone until you reply to your parents' text. It also sets off an alarm that goes off. Even if your phone's on silent, it's going off no matter what. <laughs> it's like a sound bomb in a class room uh and that's that's kind of the whole setup and and i I think it's interesting that this dad went to the trouble to uh, you know plan his own flag and say i'm doing this and then this is what i'm going to do there's nothing that fits my needs so i'm going to make it happen what do you think keith i well i don't understand but number one i I guess i didn't realize kids take their phones to school oh you come on did you have a pager back in the day I took my pager to school. I, oh, well, here. <laughs> had that hot pager. Number. It was a lime I, green pager. I, it was mine great. didn't lime work, green. but I carried it. I, yeah. I found one <laughs> right. that didn't work because we couldn't afford to have it on. But yeah. I, but like I carried it like I had one. Nice. We, we took them to school. We I could have really the battery in it, it so it could be like on. You know, I had yeah. an iPod and I would hold it to my phone like it was an iPhone, and Aww. I thought yeah. I was so cool. Yeah, yeah. And that dates Aww. me. I realize now, but it's yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm about to say we didn't. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't. The cell phones were not a. There were still bad phones around. Cool pager. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know that. That's an it's an that's an interesting. I mean, um, locking it till they reply. See, see, I it, what's harder for me is that um, if I, if I was in the age of when I was growing up, that it was the phone thing. You know, like um, if if I wouldn't not reply to my dad because the fear of the whooping I was going to get when I got home if I didn't. So they wouldn't have had to put no app lock. It, the lock was <laughs> my yeah. dad's belt if I didn't. Yeah, or I'm going to take the phone away. You're not you know being yeah. responsible. Parents give these kids the phone especially the, the young how young were they were you saying like middle, middle school, school? Yeah. i mean because it's they're coming home from school alone maybe there are kids who have a key parents are at work so i get why oh and i give a child hey look yeah. i want brighton to have a, a device on her where if anything happened i can find her right. i like that idea and don't? she yeah. can call you and but for example my my youngest sister's in her early 20s mm-hmm. she's so guilty of this she does not respond to text messages, she doesn't answer calls, she gets sidetracked doing whatever she's doing, being all young and fun in LA, that she is so negligent when it comes to responding to my mom. My mom is way in North Carolina, so she freaks out. Is something wrong? Is everything okay? So if she had this device on her phone, <laughs> this would be great because she could still keep up with her when she really needs to get in touch with her. Yeah. So I get why parents would want to do this because sometimes the kids would ignore your call because they're playing this video game on their phone or this game where they're talking to their friends, they're at the mall. You need to know your child's okay. So yeah. I get that part. I yeah. like it for that reason. I do it's too. It's after school and you haven't checked in. Let me find you. Right. You're not answering. I think the worst has happened to I you. I agree. So this at least gives you some sort of a as a, as a immediate kid, way to get in. As sure. a kid, it, it, the, the, my dad's belt was the, the all right. the app yeah. I needed. Uh, Fear. Yeah, that's would what have, that yeah, would have needed. That's but not every parent though. You no, know? it's not. No, mm-hmm. it's really not at all. No, and I, I, I think it's interesting. I think it's cool. I, I am, I am. Um, I, I'm gonna go down the route. I, I, I'm worrying about the route of that phone or no phone already, and I only got yeah. a one year old. It's like when they get older, like mm-hmm. you know, because I can, I so bad don't want them to be tied to it, but then I do want to know where they're at. <laughs> like, right. sure. uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I like that stuff. Right. Uh, you don't want them to be stuck on their phone, but you also don't want them to be the one kid in class that doesn't have one because then they're not cool, and like that's not good for social standing. That's a whole thing. <laughs> you know, I my, uh, <laughs> my so real quick, my, my parents were, were sharp in their delivery of not giving me a phone because yeah. they gave it to me. Uh, they said, the day you get a job, you'll get a phone, and I that which was good incentive to get a job because yes. I turned 16. The next day, I got a job, and the day after, I got a phone, so that worked out. Like, oh, wow. the, just right when I turned but 16, I wanted that's so perfect, bad. though. And they that told me, yeah, and, and I remember telling them, because I was in middle school and, and a little bit of high school, and I said, what am I going to do if I need to call you? 
Mm-hmm. They, they were like, find a payphone, ask Ooh. for help. And I was like, pay how phone. am I going to do that? They're like, more. <laughs> you can't that's life. Is <laughs> Life is figuring out how you're going to make it through the next day. So you're going to have to overcome that challenge. And when you get older, you're going to thank us. And I thought back then that was dumb. And in a way, I still do. But at the same time, there's maybe some wisdom there. So uh, yeah. you, know, you know what's interesting is I actually kind of changed my, little, my, my, my thought in the middle of your conversation, mm-hmm. like what you were talking about. People don't really understand the power that you that happens if if you respond or don't respond to people the message that puts out right. you know what i mean like right. I, I think that um does does not does not does it not seem extremely disrespectful to you if you have an email or a message somebody like they never respond it's so rude isn't it <laughs> and i know people like that and i'm thinking okay i'm really busy i live a very busy life i'm one of the busiest people i know but i can still stop at some point in that day sometimes i look at us okay i'll get back to it in a second i'm driving or whatever but i try to make sure i get back to that person it's so rude when you read a message and you just never respond i'm like and you do it every single time Time. you're not that busy no and that (laughs) then i see you on instagram you're at at a restaurant so clearly you used your phone since i texted you and you can't respond i always say it too i always go look i guarantee you you're not as slammed as i am (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean you're not i guarantee you (laughs) you are not and 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 look, I'm not saying I need. I, I understand. I'm not expecting a response in five minutes. Right. I, and twenty within twenty four hours is respectable. Right. You know what I mean? Sometime because there's this that's week. you know at times there's got to <laughs> okay. be. Um, but I I I think that what some people don't understand is that how just because they don't think it's a big deal, mm-hmm. and it's like being punctual or not, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not being punctual is disrespectful. Right, you are right. showing you disrespect that person's time. time. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a difference. Yes, there's times that all of us are late. Yeah, yeah. It's a difference of if there you got 10 times you meet up and there's one time you're late right. versus... The, uh, so yeah. if you're late every now and then, nobody's going right. to hold that. If, if you forget one response every now and then, I'm human, I've done it mm-hmm. too. But you've got to put something in place and realize how much of that puts on your character. That really makes people question a lot of your character, one mm-hmm. little bitty thing. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, wow. I mean, it, it really, I believe, I get really bad feelings toward people that don't respond to things. Like, I, like yeah. I really don't have, like, I, I probably would unfairly think a lot of not good things about them. Because one little response stuff. Yeah, I have a friend. <laughs> sure, <laughs> we and, all do. And she yeah. also has a very busy job too. <laughs> and she is notorious for not responding ever, ever. But when she needs you to show up for something, she's oh, yeah. doing an event, she's hosting or something on her on her show, or whatever. You better respond right away. And I've I've told her before over lunch, like, hey, it really frustrates me that you don't respond. And she's like, oh, I get it. You should see my phone. I have all these messages. I don't care. But you know how to get to work on time. You know how to make it here for this event. You know how to make it to. So you pick, sort of pick and choose what's important. So the message it sends to me is on your list of important people, I'm way down there. Yes. Because I'm not even worth a, yes. hey, got this text, yes or no, or anything. Yep. Stop texting me. Say something. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I pull a weird trick to force myself to respond to stuff like that. And it's something I've told people to, about, and they, they think I'm insane. And mm-hmm. I'll try to be quick because I don't have much time left. I turned on read tags on my phone for texts, which nobody oh. does and are off by default. And they probably should be. And read tags, what they do is when you send me a text, anybody in my phone sends me a text, uh-huh. my phone automatically sends a message back and goes, read at this time. And that forces oh, me that's not to respond idea. because no matter what, that's an answer. And that means whoever reads that, that if I didn't say anything in an hour, I ignored you. Oh. But did, so, you, did you have a problem replying? Did a little you, bit. Okay. But, uh, but see, this is perfect yeah. though, Zach, because you realized you had an issue that mm-hmm. you were forgetting. Mm-hmm. And you know what you did instead of being like some friends we know, <laughs> you, go, you said... <laughs> I'm going to do something to put a check and balance for myself to yeah. make sure I'm not doing this. Because you obviously realize you thought, okay, that's not a good look. Mm-hmm. You made a choice to change that habit, which I applaud you for. Some right. don't. Yeah. He yeah. forced accountability upon yes. himself. It's, which yeah, is it's, good. it's effective. And it yeah. works It works really well, especially professionally. Because people mm-hmm. text me and they'll be like, thanks for thanks for seeing it and responding mm-hmm. in two seconds. I'm like, Aww. well, I got to. But it works. It's effective. So, and see, hey, it is I don't have yeah. that because I do. Like, I, I, part of my habits, I'll go through my... And that's I, okay. I, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, no, because I... Yeah, but... I didn't have that. That was not one of mine, so I wouldn't mm-hmm. do that because I don't need that reminder with it. Right. But I applaud you for making a choice to say, 
I don't want people to have this look of me. Like I'm not somebody who is disrespectful, right. but and and you could be somebody who is not a disrespectful person, but understand that one little thing really comes off as being disrespectful, and 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 they can think that about you in a lot of parts of your life mm-hmm. because of one little thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you you had you had your dad's belt, and it's not nearly the same. <laughs> yeah. I I have yeah fear of of some kind of setback from somebody who sends something to me thinking he doesn't respond. Mm. I have this there to force me to do something to take mm-hmm. action, and and I'm better for it. I think. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, and I, I applaud you for that because a, lo- a lot of people, if you're one of them, I hope you implement that because <laughs> Read tags. I'm telling you, there's a lot of unattended consequences that you have no idea about that are little bitty things that you write off as little bitty things that I guarantee you, some people don't take them so mm-hmm. little. And, exactly. And, and being punctual and being somebody who is responsive mm-hmm. and being somebody who is, who is um, on top of that type of stuff has a lot of great character traits mm-hmm. that come with those people don't you think absolutely so respond don't I don't know. don't it's make so me rude. put an app on your phone that <laughs> alarm goes off and everything else just respond to the dead gum test we'll be back in a minute for the third segment of second shot <laughs> Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share with your people and i appreciate it thank you guys go pick it up today kick off your boots or suit up the choice is yours welcome back to second shot on rncm so on this segment layla since um we got to know you a little bit more on the last one for the for the listeners knows when we typically will take our listener emails and stuff and and i also lately have been um, really hardcore shaming our listeners into oh. actually leaving reviews instead of oh. hearing me talk about it every week and not doing it you know i'm just <laughs> i'm slowly shaming and shaming and shaming as much as i can till they go oh i'll leave one finally that's good i don't want i don't want to say it's effective but people it's leave reviews <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean look it's not hard yeah you yeah. like it we get a lot of people that love it that do all that, like just we love it please you love it yes. come on and yeah. it's on YouTube. It's on everything. And and also, it's like, hey, share it. If you like this, and a lot of you do, hey, share it. Tag us in it. Tag mm-hmm. RNCN in it. And tag it all. Let us know that you're sharing it. Tell your friends and family about it uh, if it picks you up in any way. And, yeah. Um, you know, we, we do appreciate it. The reviews and stuff help us to help other people find it as well. And so we had a, a couple more on on um, uh, on actually iTunes. Mm-hmm. One of them that says it's from Mark uh, H. Kelly, Heath Zach, Jenny, etc. I'm 62 years young, still am, uh, and still learning more every time I listen to the show. Keep bringing the wisdom. Blessings, Mark. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, yeah. Mark. Appreciate you giving in to the shaming. <laughs> <laughs> Way to roll over. <laughs> the other Good one, job. it says no, um, no matter, uh, oh, no Oh, crap, I messed that one up. Didn't I? <laughs> I was trying to push on it and didn't quite work out that way. Uh, he said, uh, no matter what business you're in, and it's hashtag S-E-E-G-A. Oh, actually, this is my sister-in-law. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Well, so, of course, you know she's going to love Of course, it. she's going to sh- Yeah, so she's going to fall for the shaming. Thank you, sister-in-law, for leaving <laughs> uh, a rating and review. See, she gave into the shaming. Uh, <laughs> it took her a while, but she did. That's now awesome. we had a couple other emails. Uh, we have an update from a friend. If you if you're if you're a constant listener of the show, uh, Brenda Walker has left have, has sent one a while back with some stuff she wanted our ideas on, and she's done some things and she's given us oh, kind of an update. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, she said so uh, in person. She had some in person interviews this Congrats. week, and telephone interviews went well. So exactly three weeks after she was laid off, she was offered a job, and she is thrilled. So congrats, oh Brenda. That's so awesome. Congratulations, Brenda. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm happy for you. Uh, she said she was ready for some changes, excited for the opportunity, so now she can go on vacation truly stress-free. Um, and she's learned that God will, will never throw something at us that we can't handle. And she said, thank you for your incredible words, wisdom, motivation. Keep being amazing people and parents. And going on a plane for the first time with our 13th. Aww. 
month old. Ooh. May the force be with us. So first yes. of all, thank you, Brenda. And second of all, get ready. <laughs> Good luck. If you got a Brighton, you better really get ready. Because let me tell you something, girl. It's a fun plane ride. <laughs> no. I, uh, you know what I appreciate? That? I appreciate Brenda following up uh, after success. Mm. So you yes. know what it all worked out for me? And I didn't forget... And the second shot, folks, I talked to him, and here's an email letting you know it all worked out. Thank you. And yeah. I want you to know, Brenda, we care about that. Like, mm-hmm. like you that you giving us the update is something we do care about, and I do appreciate it because, um, you know, that that's what part of doing this is, is giving back in any way that any little bit of stuff we can or can't do that have been there. Like, that, that's the most awesome thing about it. And so I do care about that, and we do appreciate it. Yeah, Brenda Walker, thanks for the shout-out. If you've got any troubles at that new gig, and hopefully you don't, <laughs> let us know. Or uh, let us know how the plane ride turned out. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that's that was a loud time, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> we had another one. And again, remember, secondshotcast at gmail.com. That's us. Secondshotcast at gmail.com. Email anything you want, questions or Maybe you just want to tell us something, or maybe you want to give us a headline that you think we, we would like a take on. So this next person accidentally or or, per, or meant to has a legal disclaimer <laughs> at the bottom of their email. And I know I have one that naturally just goes on my work email, so yeah. I'm not going to say the name because I'm not sure if they meant to have that so we don't say their name on air or not. But you'll know who you are when you listen, so you can email us and let us know if you did or didn't, and we can give you some credit. We'll okay? know for sure, yeah. So it says, Heath, uh, Jenny, Zach, etc. Thanks for the great work and the insight you share. Where I work, they told us um, that they were going to be giving um, everybody raises. Um, oh, no. They said the letters telling us what the raises would be, be in the hand by the end of the month. However, the raises were not going to effect till September 1st. My view was great. We're getting a raise. Um, I'm always grateful for more money in my paycheck. Many others, however, were very upset because they had to wait till September before their raises went into effect. What are your thoughts? Oof. So we'll address that. He said, also, dot, 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 dang y'all, <laughs> dang it all, you got to talking on an episode about being 10% better than where you are now. So a while back talked about, look, don't, don't try to be the best person. Don't try to change everything you got. Look, focus on just doing, being 10% better somewhere, right? Okay. Like I think it's mm-hmm. uh, overwhelming to try to look at it. Just be 10% better. Right. Um, and I was talking about the $70 suits that I had when I started mm-hmm. um, and that I didn't care, but it was it was something that you needed to bring your game up. And you said, then you mentioned about even doing something something as simple as keeping your car clean and neat and all of that can raise the bar because you're clean, you're organized. Mm-hmm. That's how I've always been. He said, so the car is cleaned out now. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> I went through and got rid of the ratty T-shirts and got some button-ups. Nice. Aww. And he goes, uh, and I've started to raise my personal bar at least 10%. And he goes, I got to say, thanks. It mm-hmm. feels good. Uh, I feel better and likely would not have happened if it wasn't for the second shot and the wisdom y'all share. I may not be the richest person in the world or even on my block for that matter, but I do hold my head a little bit higher right now. Life is good and God is great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, is I, yeah, I hope he writes back in so we can get a name. I want to give him a shout out on the yeah. show. We, we can. I, I don't. I mean, he can tell us if we can't say his name, but I do appreciate that is. See, that's that's why you do. That's why. That's why I take the time out. That's why we all take the time out to do this is because of stuff like this that wow. that's something, um, you know, I've always believed that if you, you, you look the way you feel. And, and, mm-hmm. I, and I do believe that if you, you know, I've always said, look, I've been poor. I grew up mm-hmm. poor. I grew up with nothing. But it don't mean you got to be trashy. Like, right. like you have a crappy car, but you ain't got to have crap everywhere. You can still keep it clean. You right. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's uh, true. You, you ain't got to have, I mean, look. The problem is that people are looking at me now that, you know, the two plus thousand dollar suits weren't what I started with. Mm-hmm. That was seventy dollar suits <laughs> that I started with. Right. You know, you gotta get somewhere, but you gotta put it together and 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 I like that he actually took it and, and did it and that is awesome and that he feels better about it. Cause that's what the end goal is, is that for you to feel like a you feel better. Right. You get up and look at yourself and go, I'm more confident. I mean, I don't know about you, but if you if you look good, you're confident. You yeah. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um <laughs> the other what are your thoughts the more on, challenging on his that this. they they come out and told him they were getting a raise. Right. It was coming in September. He immediately was like, great. But a lot of people are mad because it's not till September. Would it be better off if the job just didn't tell them and it just surprised them with the raises? I'm gonna go I'm gonna go glass half empty here. Well what if you get to September it gets pushed back again? Like they oh. already, you already got played once, you see? Like a yeah. uh, well, but, but 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 that's not the que- that's not part of the question because yeah. that's not going to happen. But in, right. is this scenario? It's uh, not. It's very much yeah. glass half empty. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't mean to be that way. No, I, 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 I'm I know. I'm jo- like and, it. and it's more so that it's. I guess he's like, um, 
you know the the people that go well i want it now or or this and that and yeah. I, well at least you're getting the raise i mean that's that's his mindset he's just yeah. happy they're getting it he yeah. didn't say how much the hike was or do these folks need it today i mean i guess everybody like yeah. more money today but i guess his approach could be hey guys this gives you more time to plan exactly how you're going to invest spend celebrate whatever you're gonna do with this money yeah, book those airplane tickets <laughs> uh yeah i uh it's tough because you get that carrot dangled in front of you and then it's taken away and it was never really there that's that's the, yeah, the silver lining here he seems with. to understand that yeah. yeah um but i can see why that's challenging and that's got to be weird on okay well let me make let me, let me make sure you understand this act mm-hmm. they didn't he didn't they didn't come out and say we're giving you raises and then go oh no well, oh no never mind not till september Okay. It was the original memo was we're giving you raises. They will start September first. What not? That's oh, what yeah. you you were thinking. I was saying they gotcha. Sa- oh, they said not, and then pulled it back. No, 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 no. Okay, that was all. all right. Well, then the, the only thing I really yeah. have to say about this is is that's got to be strange for your workforce because yes. on the one hand that's got to energize them. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, what's the incentive to work any harder than you're working now because you know you're getting a raise? Let me right? do it. Why, do, why, people are just going to coast. You, if I'm if I'm the if I'm the boss if I'm if I own that company and yeah. I got fifty employees and I and I do this okay. And if I have the overwhelming majority are pissed off about this, I'm firing everybody and starting over. <laughs> yeah. Scorched earth. Just raise the that place to the I ground. That means I have got a very bad culture. It's mm-hmm. true. Because if you are such a negative person that that you can't stand, like if that is, I'm hoping that, I'm hoping it's more so that he just saw a couple of people because I could always expect there's going to be a couple of them because right. there's, there's somebody going to sure. find something to be mad about no matter what. <laughs> yeah. I'm 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 hoping that that is the case that it's just a couple, but if I did it and there was the overwhelming majority, I would be like, oh my god, really upset. We probably got a much worse culture than I think because mm-hmm. you're getting a raise. They're telling you, I guarantee you, it's September first. See, what a lot of people don't understand companies have fiscal years. They have certain budgets, certain things, and so more yeah. than likely, their fiscal year ends right. around then, and they're able to. They, they pushed a budget point or whatever mm-hmm. to do it. At the end of the day, the company said, we're coming up, we're investing more in you, we're giving everybody more. Like, how can you find a negative in that? Right. Oh, people can find a negative in anything. <laughs> we, I worked at a job once. We had free bagel Fridays. Hear me. Free bagel Fridays. And they, wow. Every they complain. Friday, fresh, free bagels yep. and little pastries. Oh, bagels again. This bagel's hard. <laughs> you didn't pay for it. It's oh. free. Oh man, it's free breakfast. Uh, there was probably somebody in there like, but but the carbs. What about my diet? Yeah. Like people <laughs> complain. Why are we always getting bagels? Why can't we? we it's free and it's a bagel. Be grateful that yeah. someone thought enough to put that mm. in the budget for every Friday. Because mm. they ain't got to. <laughs> they don't have to. They ain't got to. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people go to work every day and hope that maybe they'll hear something about a raise at some right. point if they oh. work hard. Like you guys live you are in a place where it's been promised to you. Yeah. And it seems like whoever wrote this email appreciates that, See, and I respect mm-hmm. them. Yeah. yeah. If, if I worked, there, I would appreciate it because I think the company's giving them a heads up, letting you know it's coming. So if they were maybe going to. Be, if they were budgeting for something, maybe for you, like knowing that that's coming versus it being sprung at the last minute mm-hmm. and maybe that, you know, like, I mean, I think it, I would like to have that heads up some. Maybe I, I know I can budget for different things that that's coming. Like, you know, like I, um, you know, uh, I would tell you that you were awesome. Thank you for being a positive person yeah. because I can't. Um, and, and if that's the overwhelming majority of people feel that way, you make sure you just keep itching your way away from those folks because mm-hmm. they those ain't folks you won't send at your kitchen table. Absolutely. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we appreciate the emails tremendously. Thank you. Don't take it for granted at all. Don't take any of it for granted. And and it, the more that you send us, the more of your thoughts that you give us, the better. Uh, the more we want to talk about them. I want to know what you think. I want to know, you know, look, if there's something you would like to us to do different, if you've been a long time list or something, you know, just ask us. I'm, I'm open to anything we still love doing it. We we love the feedback. I feel like we get more and more, and and I can promise you, we don't take a drop of it for granted. I I, I don't at all. Um, but before we close it up, Layla, where can they find you? Ah, oh, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Layla Muhammad TV and Layla Muhammad on Twitter. You that- can find me at Apple Zacintosh <laughs> on Twitter and Instagram. It is the coolest hashtag you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> Layla, we honestly, I seriously appreciate it. Thank I'm you. seriously grateful yeah. for you taking time out of your day. I know it's not easy, and, and, and I really am grateful for it. It means a lot that you oh. would take your time out. So Thank you thank for inviting you. me. I was honored for the invite. You yeah. guys are fun. Thanks for coming on. It was good Ed time. Ed Stucks or Ed Ignorance on Fire as always. You know I love you. See you all soon.
listening to RNCN, the digital destination for premium talk radio.